Hey there, extraordinary treasures. As part of the hiring process, there are a number of forms that will need to be sent to the local payroll department of the Georgia Cumberland Conference. These forms can be found on the Georgia Cumberland Conference website. Click on Treasury, then Local Payroll, which brings you to this page where you will find Employment Forms. I'm going to tell you what each form is, but will not go into great detail. That page of the website is full of great information. Also, if you have any questions or problems, you can contact Terry Britt, the HR Assistant Director, who has walked many churches through this process. Her contact info is on your screen. As soon as a board has voted, you will need to send the following to Georgia Cumberland Conference. A copy of the board minutes approving the hire, a completed ACH form so that the payroll amount can be deducted from the church checking account every two weeks. Even if you filled one out for the remittance process, do it again for payroll. These next forms will need to be completed by the new employee by the first day of employment at the latest, but sooner is better. You can print them out or they can print them out themselves from the website. They are as follows. The W-4 has to do with federal income tax withholding. G-4 or NC-4 has to do with state tax withholding for Georgia or North Carolina employees. I-9 Employment Eligibility has to do with citizenship and immigration status. More on this form in a bit. EEO-1 Survey Information. Employees can fill it out if they wish. Harassment Form. To be read and signed by the employee. The signature page goes to the conference. The rest of the form stays with the employee. A Direct Deposit Form. So that the payroll can be deposited into the employee's checking account. And depending on the payroll level, there may be other forms about various benefits. I mentioned the I-9 form, which has to do with citizenship and immigration status. This form must be filled out in a very specific way and must be mistake-free. The local payroll page has a sample I-9 that you can look at to make sure that they and you have filled it out correctly. Once you have the forms all filled out and signed, fax copies to HR for review no later than the first day of employment. At this point, they can let you know if you're missing anything. Once you have the final OK, you can mail them the original documents. One more thing, if there's ever any change in employment status, those changes must be reported as soon as possible. Changes such as new pay rate, new job classification, new job title, new address, retirement or temporary inactive status. You will find this form with the others on the locally funded employee forms page of the Georgia Cumberland Conference website. And again, if you have any questions about this part of the process, contact Terry Britt and she will be happy to help you. Now that we've hired them and the employment paperwork is behind us, what about reporting hours and making sure the employee gets paid? I'm glad you asked because that is the topic we're covering next.